Hello, this is the Lego Harry Potter Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge, which is a rather long name for a set of a modest size. This is from Goblet of Fire. The set comes with four interesting, good, new minifigures, but the first thing we need to look at is that Hungarian Horntail itself. After filming the entire review I realized I had missed these small brown hollow studs. This doesn't affect my view of the set, but I apologize for the small but surely egregious error. It comes with its chain and a little bit of terrain to attach it to, to keep it tethered down, and also the nest where the golden egg is, and this is the type of egg that uh, LEGO initially introduced with the Angry Birds theme, and here it is painted, so it has a very nice metallic sheen to it, a couple of flame pieces around it. The animal itself is mostly built up using regular LEGO pieces, with the notable exceptions of these big wings here, and also the head. Now the wings are a mold that has been around for some time now. It's pretty familiar to many folks. This is just dual molded here with a nice interface between the dark brown that's used up at front and the translucent brown that's used at the rear. This is also a fairly flexible material back here, a little bit stiffer at the front. Those actually look pretty good. They're only able to articulate up and down to get you a nice flapping motion but that's fine. You can actually cheat a little bit because of the flexibility of the material and because of the, the pieces that are used to hold the wings on. You can actually rotate these wings up and down a fair amount, which I think looks really good. I think really helps to get more movement in the appearance of the whole thing. Now, let's talk about that head. So this is not nearly as old of a mold. It's a relatively recent design. And they have a specialized print on there, and I don't think I've seen that piece done in dark brown before. Don't quote me on that, but it, I, I don't think I've seen it in dark brown. I got tan for the lower jaw. I have, um, I have a problem with this, a major problem with this. To me, it doesn't look like a Hungarian horntail. It, it really doesn't. It looks nice, but it doesn't look like a Hungarian horntail. Now, I, I do like the the pointed beak the upper portion of the beak there how that's angled down that's pretty good but the overall shape of this is just so sleek and so uh i believe i previously described it as avian it's very bird-like it just doesn't match the movie depiction that this is supposed to represent this is all the the lego things from from uh, Harry Potter and the Wizarding World in general are based on the film adaptations. So we have reference material for what these things should look like. And it pains me to say this, but I think the older one looked better. The less sophisticated, much, much older one that they, did, that they used previously looked much more like the animal that it's supposed to represent. That's, that's too bad. I just, uh, I'm just not feeling the the anger here, I'm not feeling that thick neck, you know, bulky, more brawny appearance. It just, uh, it just, just doesn't say Hungarian horntail to me personally. I would love to see more actual spikes around the head. I'd love to see more heft here. I'd love to see a thicker neck as well. Now, with that articulated neck that is built up with pieces, it's always nice to actually build things in Lego as opposed to getting pre-made molds, you know, so there, there are definitely many things about this that are better than the old Hungarian horn tail, but uh, yeah, you can articulate that around. Same thing with the tail. Look at all these mixel style ball joints. You can really turn this around quite a bit. You do have the proper horns for the tail, for the horn tail. Uh, that's just a single sticker used there. No big deal. Adds useful, uh, I'd say just useful texture, useful visual interest back there. A little bit funky shaping in here. You can take off a couple of these pieces, a couple of these cheese wedges, and then actually ride the thing if you want. But uh, I'm glad that they didn't just leave a flat, you know, a flat surface up there. That would have been even more awkward. I actually like the, the claws, the feet here in general. And those, of course, can be articulated as well. The legs can be moved back. So for a, a flight mode, you can do that. You can also have it looking like it's about to really grab something. You can bring these apart as well, which helps with different poses on the ground. So you can get it to kind of angle, angle down to one side if it's defending something or if it's, you know, if it's going after 
a minifigure that's on the ground over here, you can get some interesting poses out of this for sure. So all that is good. I just don't like the head and it really, it really bugs me. This tent looks pretty boring from the outside. It's just so plain, but I think it's, I think it's okay. I mean, it could have used a little bit of texture for the, the canvas. I think those were made or covered with, with canvas, something on the outside to help there. But I think the shaping is fine. I think that the, uh, the size is appropriate and you can open this up and there's a bed over on one side and you do have to put the banners in there or the, uh, the crests, excuse me, in there as stickers. So two over there, one over here. There's not a whole lot that you can do in this space, but I think, I think it's fine for what it is. I think that these would look pretty nice in, in a row, you know, having multiple of them built up. It's, it's a fairly simple thing though. And it does look very plain, especially turn around like this. It looks so plain, but I mean, I really think the only thing that could have reasonably made this better at this size I uh, would have been uh, stickers for the outside, and a lot of people would have balked at that. Perhaps if they were able to do the corrugated steel style pieces, but in tan, that might have actually helped to provide a little bit of texture here, but it might have been too much. Also would have pre prevented the use of stickers inside. So for what this is, I, th I think it's okay. Here we have Triwizard Challenge versions of Fleur Delacour and Victor Crum. I like the torso prints for both. Uh, I think that the hair piece, the hair pieces work pretty well. I think that the vertical spacing in the face for Fleur is not quite right there. It just looks a little bit scrunched up. And Victor Crum just looks too happy-go-lucky. Again, this is supposed to be based on the, the actors, you know, the movie movie depictions of the characters. So you know, we, we know what these people are supposed to look like. And I think the Victor figure just misses the mark. I love the print on the back of Fleur's torso, especially that is really nice. That is really deluxe. I guess that version of Victor Crumb face looks better. Let's see what it looks like framed up with the head. Yeah, that, that makes a little bit more sense, but his, his smiling one is just a little bit, a little bit too much. Cedric Diggory I'm showing by himself so that I can show Harry Potter by himself for reasons you'll see in just a moment. This is a pretty good looking figure. I appreciate the inclusion of the prints going through into the hips and the legs. The, uh, this, the distinction there is subtle enough that they didn't need to do that, but I'm very glad that they did. You know, they could have just used plain black legs. I'm, I'm glad they didn't cheap out on that. I think the uh, hair piece and head, you know, the, the face, actually looks pretty good for this character. That's pretty proper there on the back. Notice that there is some actual print of black on top of the black. So you can see the difference between the, the matte area and the glossy area, which is, which is interesting. And I think, I think it helps with the definition a bit in real life. And there's his alternate face, which also looks pretty appropriate. I think, yeah, this works. This version of Harry Potter looks good as well. Again, a really nice torso print. That is, yeah, that's all that I could ask for. The colors here are nice and strong. Hair piece works. Uh, medium sized legs, always a good thing. Definitely appropriate for this age. Yep, that looks pretty good. And maybe a little bit more brightness to the, the lettering would have helped. You know, there's a little more definition, but it's it's pretty close. It's pretty proper for what it's supposed to be and here's his alternate face and how that gets framed up by the hair there's only one problem that i have with harry potter here and it has nothing to do with the figure it has everything to do with one of these accessories it's got the broomstick here and it has the the foot holds on it foot pegs i guess uh, I, I appreciate the inclusion of that it's a simple little build couple of pieces makes it look fairly proper but the broom is black. This is supposed to be Firebolt in, in the time of Goblet of Fire. Firebolt is mostly brown. Doing it in black makes it look like a Nimbus 2001 to me. I just can't not see Nimbus 2001 there. Uh, the kind that uh, the Malfoys had early on. Uh, yeah, I just can't get past it. They could have done it in dark brown. I would have been okay with that. But even just a plain brown. I would have been all right with. This makes it look a little bit more special, but black just ain't right to me. So if you like this set, 
You must hate me right about now, huh? Yeah, I found a lot of things about it, just little things, that bother me, <laughs> that bug me about it. There are a fair number of things that are very good about it, but given that, again, the main thing that you're paying for is the the animal. I, I, I don't want to say dragon, even if the author of the entire series called it a dragon. I don't want to say, say dragon, because that'll get a lot of people all bent out of shape about the number of legs and all, but uh, it just doesn't it just doesn't work for me. Uh, most of it does, but the head just just kills it. Uh, value here, I think, is okay. All things considered, I mean, if they had done this with specialized molds for the body, you know, as as a large animal style of of build with just a minimum number of pieces, then the price would have made sense. Instead, uh, I mean, you know, because large animals always cost a whole lot. But instead, they did it with an actual build, a proper build, which is the right decision, I think, generally speaking, for Lego. You know, you buy things in Lego to build them, to put them together, not to have them pre-built. And I think that's a fine substitution on level of value. I wouldn't mind seeing this discounted five bucks in the U.S., but as it is, it's it's okay. If you want to see how that built-up uh, animal goes together as well as the rest of the set you can check out my pure build which is in real time or my speed build which is of course sped up and with music in background i will link to both versions of my build on screen for you right now and also in the pinned comment thanks for watching i will talk to you again very soon actually jang it's a wyvern